at a time when accountability, sincerity and openness in public administration have been pushed into the front burner of national discourse. The regular rendering of account of stewardship every 100 days here in Lagos State will no doubt provide a refreshing twist. It is 1,700 days of Governor Babatunde Raji Fashila's progressive administration and as a result, it is another opportunity for people to know how their government has fared in recent days. This is particularly against the growing comments on the performance of this administration. In keeping with the mandate of the people, it is instructive to note that the present administration has considerable numbers of projects ongoing. Some of these projects, which cut across different sectors of development, have also been completed and commissioned. With 255 functional primary health clinics, 24 public secondary health facilities and one tertiary health facility, a total outpatient attendance of 4.181.461, including total admissions, which stands at 73.645. Provision of health care in Lagos State is quite challenging and the input of this is not lost on the government. To further strengthen earlier improvements made in terms of infrastructure, Governor Babatunde Raji Fashola commissioned another maternal and child care center, MCC, in Ajeromi, a fellow local government, sited at Ajegunle, a hugely populated area. This ultra-modern facility again underscores the commitment of the present administration to the welfare and well-being of mother and child. This purpose-built structure marks a decisive step by government to address the rate of maternal mortality in the state. In addition to five others earlier completed and commissioned, these centers now contribute to considerable reduction in the percentage of deaths per every childbirth a major provision of the Millennium Development Girls MDGs. We bring the good tidings of safe delivery to our mothers and a healthy living to our children in the Ajeromi area of Lagos. Today, we demonstrate to our people not only that your government has the capacity to reduce infant and maternal mortality, but it also has the imagination and the determination to deliver improved health care for children and mothers. Maternal and child health remain critical determinants of global national health. Women of childbearing age and the pediatric group constitute a significant and vulnerable segment of the people of Lagos State. We cannot underplay the crucial role that our mothers play in nurturing and the growth of our children and consequently our nation. To this end, we will continue to strive for their utmost comfort and their healthy well-being. The Ajeromi Maternal and Child Care Center that we officially hand over today is the fourth of its type that our government has opened to the public. Free but qualitative education up to secondary level is one of the 10 points agenda of Lagos State Government. In line with the spirit and letter of these at printing document, intervention in education sector has been strategic and proactive, addressing its various challenges, especially the infrastructure to provide conducive learning environment. In addition to fundamental changes that have been brought to bear on this sector, Governor Babatunji Raji Fashola handed over another completed building at Bert Freeman Secondary School, Surulere. The new 21 classroom block with a capacity for 1,050 students also has a hall that can accommodate 450 students, a modern principal's office, a teacher's office and information communication technology laboratory. Oh,
that this tool was largely designed by an architect who worked for the constructive plan and was an old boy of this school. And it is this model that we have used in Agri-Lee, that we use here on our own soil, and that we are using in Agri-Lee and other parts of the So therefore it comes to be that with the inspiration of dedicated old boys and the concession of efforts, government is driven to act in areas of compelling need, such as in construction. Yes, I think you should be moved by the law. And you said, okay, I will do something. I also recall that in your office, you had a check on phone. And you said, don't worry, something is going We are very happy that we can see this today. And um, I said then that you are becoming the government was not just by chance. It was because you don't have to talk. And he needed somebody to do something about the affairs of this thing that have been neglected for several years. So you are God has used you, and you are truly magnanimous, and you are truly, truly an inspiration to all of us and to all the people. Construction of 15 mini water projects, as promised by the present administration, inch closer to becoming a reality. At Alausa, the handing over of a mini water works here underscores the importance this administration attaches to the provision of this essential need. It should be re-emphasized that each of these projects comes with a pipeline reticulation of 5 kilometers and catchment areas of 300 houses. But water is essential to life and uh, once there is water, you can do a lot of things. And this area being the seat of power where all the government workers of Lagos State are housed, this will supply them enough water for office use and all the neighborhood around this area will be adequately supplied with water. So it's a very, very laudable project to be situated around this area at this point in time. In fact, we really thank God for waiting this uh, our government do because this water we, we don't expect them since, let's say since uh, three years ago, but about uh, last year. As we see the water, in fact, we really appreciate our governments. And before this water come, they fetch a well and some uh, saps, but the, the water know they come well. But as this water come, we really like the water. The water, the water they taste well. With a population density of 4,193 persons per square kilometers, generating about 10,000 metric tons of waste daily. It is a fact that refuse management in a place as Lagos should pose a big challenge. In spite of this, Lagos State has not only been kept clean through ingenious policies that ensure round-the-clock management of this refuse, more attention is being devoted to sustain the success already achieved. Recently, Governor Babatunde Raji Fashola inaugurated 100 additional mobile compactor trucks for private sector participators PSP in waste management delivered through Lagos Waste Management Authority Law add enormous value to sustainable environment campaign of the present administration it will positively impact waste management process tremendously enhance waste disposal capability and improve turnaround time. In Some of the critical components of the promises were contained in our party's manifesto, which was to aggressively pursue a program of preventive health in order to reduce the number of people who took ill amongst us and to ensure that those who choose to live, work and play in our center of excellence are healthy, vibrant and productive. We pursued the implementation of that preventive health care policy by doing so many things. But one of the strategies that we employed was to manage waste disposal more effectively, to make Lagos cleaner. Because if Lagos is cleaner, clearly 
it will be freer of disease. This is another test in Nigerian history by a strong-willed and committed government to tackle environmental challenges proactively with dedicated pragmatism. The dream of about 20 months ago, the struggle of our executive force officers and former is what we are celebrating today with the commissioning of 100 new combatants. This is the right step towards the renaissance of clean environment akin to the glorious years of colonial rule in Lagos colony. This event is a redefinition of the symbiotic public public-private partnership in the drive to sustain Lagos state and proud leadership position in waste management, not only in Nigeria but in Africa. In addition to this, autoclave machine and equipment for disposal of all sorts of medical waste was inaugurated at the new transfer loading station Oshodi, the first of its kind in West Africa. The acquisition of this technology now affords government the opportunity to effectively manage waste generated from hospitals and clinics across the state. The uniqueness of this machine are two things. First of all, there is an inserted inside the machine. The second thing, there is a, a probe, thermometer probe in the lower chamber, which gives a, in the reading, real time reading about the temperature being released. Because this is how the cycle is being done. When the temperature, for instance, there are too many weights inside, then the temperature probe would say that the temperature, ideal temperature is not yet reached, then the cycle should be longer. So this is why we can be assured that the weight, the residues you are going to remove from the lower shelter later on are 100% secure. Doing a great job. I can see the streets of Lagos are something to write to me about. It's not like what we used to see in those days. Now we can move freely, no waste bins on the road that's scattered and littered everywhere. They are really doing a great job all over the streets of Lagos. I commend the effort of the government. They should keep it up. Waste management is one of the major aspects that one can think in life for the development of health aspect of the community or the generality of the public. And uh, thank God Lagos State Government has gone far ahead of most of the states and uh, capitals of this West African uh, region. And uh, it's amazing for anybody to see what they have displayed on ground. You can see the waste collection trucks, you can see the conventional ones and non-conventionals and the transfer station which I think is the first one I have ever seen in Nigeria. And uh, the only places you find this kind of transfer station is in Europe and America. And I think it's very, very, very impressive. As one of the major visible achievements of the present administration, construction, rehabilitation and upgrading of road infrastructure across the state continue to receive desired attention. Considering the contribution of road to the facilitation of goods and services across the state, there is no doubt that the interventions of this administration will bring about accelerated commercial and economic development of Lagos. As of today, Adeniro Ogunsoya, Eric Moore, Akerele from Alaji Masha to Ogunlano Drive, Bode Thomas, entry and exit to Ogudu Roads have either been handed over or awaiting inauguration. Again, Idiaraba Road, Ayoboy Baja. Lagos Badagri Expressway with accompanying light rail corridor and Ikoyi Leki Link Bridge are ongoing. This bridge in particular is unique in every way. Designed and being built as the first cable stay bridge in Africa, the economic and architectural relevance of this project is bound to reposition the state as a forward looking model mega city. However, it typifies this administration's strive to bridge the barrier and strengthen linkages among the people within the different local government areas of the state. Uh, it has been a lot of improvement. In fact, what our governor is really doing in this state is something that enticed everybody. Compared to how it was before, it was one lane, but now it's double lane. There will not be a lot of traffic on this route. Uh, I think the road will be very free. Aside from this particular one we are standing, on Akerele, Ogulano Drive, Adelabu, Adeno Ogusoya, Abode Thomas, and, and there's a lot of improvements. Yeah, Fashola is really trying, despite that they, they, they demolish my shop. I appreciate his work, he's really trying because he's doing the work. 
is for our own good. Any person they walk out, they go fall down, ask them, no, walk, uh, road is not good. It's a sign the form of, now road is okay, everything is good. Walk out. Any motor they go walk out well, well, inside this world. Now thank God for Pashola. When the assignment is completed, there is, I mean, it's going to increase the number of routes we have, and uh, this whole up we are having is going to, is going to, you know, ease off. And uh, people who are going to, uh, about their lawful business will be able to leave house and get to the working place in time. You see, that people will leave house, sometimes leave house before before they get to the work. I mean, their day is half spent because of hold up. So, but when once this is improved, I think our commercial activities will increase. People will go and do their normal business in good time and get home and have rest. And of course, it will even ease up stress. People are encountering on the way to get to work. positively and aggressively to the housing needs and challenges of the oceans. Between September this year and today, which is about three months, when I commenced the handing over of completed housing projects, this facility in Apapa today is the fourth housing project we have completed and handed over. This model confirms my previous assertions that we will be tackling the housing problem from a multi-strategic approach. This approach in a Papa by which we build for the rich to earn profit, to subsidize the poor, is different from the strategy that we use in the Hotel Dollar Housing Scheme in Ebe, in the Olaiton Mustafa and Adetun Mustafa schemes in Ujokuru, which were driven by direct government funding in a way to subsidize the cost of delivering the houses. It is also different from the approach that we used in the elegant court project in Ikota, where government only provided the land with a view to sharing profit from the sale by the private developer through which government again can continue to fund its social commitments and obligations. Assigned its industrial and commercial status, Lagos is also an essentially traditional society. Again, this played out recently when the state organized Adamu Risha Festival, popularly known as Ayo Play, hosted in honor of the late Chief Yesufu Abiodun Oniru, the father of the present Oniru of Iru Land. Adamu Risha is one of the richest and proudest statements of the flamboyance, elegance and colors of Lagos. It was indeed a day of culture and display of color, dance and tradition. This climaxed at the Tafar Balewo Square, TBS in Lagos Island with a fanciful parade. This is one play which has stimulated entrepreneurship and other economic opportunities for the people of Lagos.
I think it's a culture that we should keep because it reminds the generations to come of our history. Oh, I think it's fantastic. It's colourful, vibrant, energetic. It's brilliant. A brilliant atmosphere. Excellent experience to have. Thank you. I've really enjoyed it. The presentation of 485.292 billion naira budget estimate for year 2012 by Governor Babatunde Raji Fashola sets the state further on the course of development. In what has now become a tradition, the 257.821 billion naira capital expenditure exceeds the current estimate, which stands at 227.470 billion naira. In line with the budgetary policy of the state government, the administration will boost its poverty alleviation program through infrastructural renewal for economic development. By Fashola has been doing really great. He has been a very good example to even other governors out in Nigeria. You can see all the, the ongoing projects in various locations. There's any place you there's hardly any place you go to where you won't see him doing one thing or other. Either he's repairing roads or the, uh, the constructing drainages. There's, he's always doing one thing or the other. And for me, he's, he's really leaving the legacy that even after he left office, people will still want to emulate such legacy. Ever since he emerged as the governor of Lagos State, he, he is very, very he's outstanding. I want to say he's like he took after Jack on Day because most of the things, the innovations and the... Um, the new things he has been doing, talk about the DLC, the, the, the roads and them, these um, Badagri Express roads that we still, you know, all those things are part of the things that he said he's going to do. And it's not just a matter that will say something and he won't do it. He will always do it. He has, he has really, he has challenged me as a person. I've, I've, I've had opportunity to, to, to speak with him. The last time he came here, I lay a demand. The truth of the matter is, I just lay that demand that we need a faculty bus. And to God, by God's grace, He delivered the bus. Right, He said, I'm going to do it. And with, before God, and He did it. You know, that is a man that is passionate about youth, passionate about education, is passionate about. So many things that is going on in the in the in the in, in Lagos as a whole. Uh, he's a performing governor, and the fact he's a thinking governor. To for him to have started this is very good. It's positive, and uh, I hear him. By sustaining its infrastructural renewal program, Governor Babatunde Raju Fashola's administration has made Lagos a shining model in responsive governance. It is an exemplary description of the potentials of political power and the change it can bring about. Governor Babatunde Raju Fashola has shown that economic and social development and indeed sustainable development can be engineered through appropriate policies and implementations.
Impactful governance can only be achieved through clear focus and determination to serve the people. Governor Babatunde Fashila's administration has shown this time and time again in the administration process of Lagos State. This determination has brought about positive results in major sectors of the state, thereby providing an enabling environment for everyone to strive. One of the most important sectors in Lagos State that has witnessed visible and fundamental attention in the last one year is the housing sector in a bid to address the housing issues confronting the state. The Fashula government commissioned and ended over four housing projects. The housing project includes a 10 block of six units, three bedroom flats in the Lagos State Development and Property Corporation, LSDPC Court, Apapa, GRA. The estate which has been rechristened HAB Fashion Rules Court to honor one of the oldest senators living in the state consists of 10 blocks and 6 units of three bedroom totaling 60 units. It also has a water treatment plant, paved driveways and walkways, drainages and street lighting among other facilities. Three hundred and sixty two housing units of one and two bedroom flats was also commissioned at. Odoragoshi in Ekwe local government area LCDA and named Michael Otedola after the former governor of Lagos State. It is situated on 9.60 hectares of land. Furthermore, is the commissioning of the 80 units of 8 and 1 free bedroom flats at the Olaito Mustafa Housing Estate or Jokoro local council development area and the elegant court in Ikota Leki. The present administration has shown great determination in building a viral educational system that measures up to the standard it truly deserves in order to enhance the quality of life of the people and also ensure that the future generation is empowered. The Fashola administration has invested a lot in the state schools through the construction of more classrooms and rehabilitation of existing ones. One of these schools is the Bert Freeman High School, Suruleri. Governor Babatunde Fashala handed over a new block of 21 classrooms. To complement the new classroom blocks handed over by the governor, it was also equipped with modern teaching aid to facilitate teaching and learning. The new learning friendly environment already created through the present efforts coupled with other programs designed to boost the morale of teachers and others alike will eventually improve the quality and standard of education delivery in Lagos State. Something also that this school was largely designed by an architect who worked for the construction firm and was an old boy of this school. And it is this model that we have used in Agadigli, that we use here on our own soil, and that we are using in Agadigli and other parts of the world. So therefore it comes to be that with the inspiration of dedicated old boys and the concession of efforts, government is driven to act in areas of compelling need, such as this structure. The president will put the bull by the law. And you said, okay, I will do something. I also recall that in your office, we had a set of things. And you said, don't worry, something is different. We are very happy that we can see this situation. And uh, I said then that your becoming the governor was not just by chance. It was because God had a purpose. And he needed somebody to do something about the affairs of this thing that has been neglected for several years. So, 
God has used you. And you are truly magnanimous and you are truly, truly an inspiration to all of us and to all the students. Youth Development Program and Poverty Eradication Program has also received great attention by the present administration. The Women Affairs and Poverty Eradication completed the Skill Acquisition Center in Mushi. This acquisition center is well equipped with facilities aimed at aiding teaching and alpha training in various vocations such as barbing, dressmaking, hairdressing and cosmetology, shoemaking, towel laying and interlocking stones, computer courses among others. The ministry also commissioned the home for the physically challenged children in mile 12. This home will help to provide for these children as well as create an avenue where parents can be rest assured that their children are in safe hands. The new home which is equipped with modern facilities such as a medical clinic, audiology, speech and language therapy clinic, physiotherapy clinic, also have dormitories, recreation center, kitchen and dining room, generator and solar lamp. The establishment of the home is a demonstration of this administration's commitment to provide opportunities for all citizens of the state to attain their full potentials regardless of condition. This is what we are to do. And as you go around Lagos, you will see that even the roads we are building, we have not left people with disabilities behind. You will see sidewalks, you will see ramps that allow them to move conveniently without interacting in a conflicting manner with other pedestrians or vehicle users. Every one of the new public buildings that we have constructed in the last four years has a ramp to allow people with physical disabilities to integrate with people who are not disabled in a manner that ensures that they are not left behind. And this will be the story of Lagos. This will be the story of our transformation where we give as much opportunity to people with disabilities to achieve and to be all they can be because we care. Since the beginning of the present administration, Governor Babatunde Raji Fashola has been making conscious efforts targeted at repositioning Lagos State Waste Management Authority, LOMA, for effective and efficient solid waste management in the state. In order to intensify the efficiency of the state's waste management system, in 2011 alone, 100 additional waste compactor trucks for the private sector participation PSP was acquired by the Lagos State Government. I hope that one day we will commission compactor trucks made in Lagos by the government. And I believe that as we get into this frenzy of commissions, we must be careful how we communicate with ourselves. What we are here to do today is to hand over to our partners a hundred U.S. compactor trucks that we assisted them in acquiring and providing finance support, writing guarantees, putting in place a lease back arrangement that ensures that after the payback period they will become the owners of the equipment. And I want to commend the leadership of our, our various PSP operators for their sacrifice in the past, for their commitment in the past, and for their faith today. Because I recall how this journey started with broken down drugs trucks that Mrs. Ali Baba has rightly described in her speech, that they were themselves waste. <laughs> and I remember that even the media used to have a joke at us that they were refuse dispersal trucks rather than refuse disposal trucks. But they kept faith, they persevered, they endured, and today this is the result. One of the important messages I want to share here today is that we are sitting on a refuge dump. 
and this is the famous Olusho Sudan. This was the place that used to build smoke in 2007 when I was seeking the mandate of negotiations. And I explained and I promised them that our government will remove and eliminate smoke in this dump. We are able to sit here today because the members of the Ministry of the Environment family, Norma, have walked through that commitment. And what is to be a smoke belching refuse dump is now the green belt that you see here that we are able to sit here and hold this ceremony. Also commissioned during the year in view is a new transfer loading station in Oshodi and new autoclave machines were provided for treating medical waste and creating a hygienic environment for the people to strive. In two phases. The phase one was the old incinerator, but the land behind it, we turned it into a transfer station and also a medical waste treatment facility. So we built this first site of the whole thing. So we will jumpstart the rehabilitation of the main edifice in front, which will be turned into a waste to energy plant. We still have the silos in there. The silos are there. The silos can house more than 10,000 tons of waste. And that silo will be utilized for conversion of waste into energy. So it's, it's, it's a continuous journey. And uh, we just have to start with this one right now. And make the edifice very beautiful and make it the headquarters of healthcare waste management in Nigeria. That's our goal. And uh, if you are not satisfied with the job we are doing for you, call 5577, toll free. It's free. You call us. We make sure we stand up to it. We are not claiming to be perfect, but one thing we can assure you, we are responsible and we are responsible. The Ojota beautification, named after the late legal human rights activist Gani Fawemi, was completed and commissioned in 2011. The clean and beautiful environment which Lagos has become known for has been possible through the efforts and dedication of the Lagos state government. In memory of the life and death of late Chief Ghani Rusalam Fawemi, Ghani Sam Sang, a frontline legal luminary and human rights activist by excellence, who revolutionized, law reported, and dedicated his entire life to freedom fighting and the instrument of democracy in Nigeria. Climate change remains at the front burner of the administration and in order to look into this, the Lagos state government organized a three-day summit involving all the relevant stakeholders to look into the climate change and what can be done to further tackle the effects. With the success already achieved through the hosting of the annual climate change summit in Nigeria, BRF administration step up its campaign for climate change awareness with the hosting of African Mayoral Climate Change Declaration. The two-day event provided a platform for African delegates and stakeholders to prepare for proper representation at Conference of Parties COP17 meetings later held in South Africa. It also focused on local action plan both on climate change adaptation and resilience as well as energy mitigation within African context. It remains a peculiar problem that has put us on our toes and has put all our global leaders. It has brought with it calamities such as flooding, heat, severe heat, mudslides, landslides, very harsh and severe weather, desertification, consequential farming, loss of food, loss of crop, loss of farmland, and so on. The motive for us in the Lagos State in leading this campaign is not far from it. Our topography, our vulnerability, our population some of the reasons why we have taken this not only as a challenge but as a necessary obligation if we discharge our fundamental and primary obligations and government to secure lives and property. The impact of climate change and global warming 
is no longer in the power of places. It is as close in our city rooms, in our bedrooms, every time we switch on the television. Flood in Brazil, flood in Australia, monsters in Pakistan, and many parts of Asia. And it came very close home. Just a few months ago, in many parts of Zamfara and Lim, Jigawa, and as close as Ajegule in Urugu here in Lagos. But I think the lesson that we take away is that what we started three years ago has put us ahead and caught above the rest. While many lives were lost in Australia and in Brazil, no life was lost in the Congo flooding in the West. I am very impressed by this summit. I'm very impressed by the discussion, by the high quality, by the turnout also. And this is good news for us because we think climate change is one of the biggest challenge that uh, humankind are facing. And uh, we have to learn exactly what is climate change. We have to learn together how to fight climate change, to understand what is climate change, what do we need to do, how we should uh, mitigate the risk and how we should adapt to the reality of climate change. So this type of meeting is very important to, to explain all this and to draw together a future for um, addressing this uh, biggest challenge that we have ahead. Well, in fact, uh, the truth is to address climate change, we have to change our civilization. We have to change every single element of our daily life, the way we we drive our car, the way we run our building, the way we run our energy, the way we think, the way we communicate. And it is a very big challenge. We have to progressively how to run the economy, but on a low carbon development. So uh, what I see today um, is the first element of it is mobilization, education, training. But I'm afraid that we need much more than that. This is just the very beginning. We have really to change the way most decisions are taken today in the way we are building new cities, the way we are building a single uh, uh, buildings, the way we are uh, uh, organizing uh, transport, the way we organize education. All this has to uh, evolve in order to be compatible with a warmer uh, world and uh, uh, with climate change. So yes, education is part of it, but much more is needed to, to make the real shift towards a low carbon and uh, climate resilient economy. Campasia's eco-Atlantic city recorded a milestone with the commissioning of 2.4 million square meters of land for the development of the project. Reclaimed from the Atlantic, this piece of land has given strength to the reality of an idea that will redefine upscale urban development in a mega city. 2.4 million square meters of reclaimed land from the ocean is a momentous milestone in this project. Yes, as the Honorable Commissioner for the Water Flood said, it was a dream. But this government in Lagos, driven by the party, the Action Congress of Nigeria, a party with ideas, and men and women of resource and determination, make their dreams come true. We work very hard, we find very reliable partners and people like South Energies who put their trust, put their money, put their time, and their belief in the integrity of this government to deliver this milestone. There's so many visitors and aspects to what we commemorate here. First, we're reclaiming and restoring the geographical territory of Lagos State and by extension the Federal Republic of Nigeria reclaiming land that had been lost to the Atlantic year on year by uncontrollable erosion that is now brought under control. For many who might not know, during the rains of 2007, there were waves here as high as 70 meters that was buffeting this coastline. But the Great Wall of Lagos, the wall in front of us here, 
protected Victoria Island, Ikui, and the residents of Lagos from being submerged by flood. That wall is still a work in progress, but it has started doing its job. It will be the wall that will ultimately defend this island from the Atlantic Ocean forever. We will work this talk with our partners. The future of clearly for us is assured. This will be a new city on the coast, a city that runs and operates like any other city in the world. 24-hour electricity, a new business center, housing, accommodation, very efficient and reliable transportation. This is the future that Lagos promised. This is the future that is now within touching distance. It is real, and I am told that in the next 24 months or thereabouts, we will begin to see the emergence of one of the apartment blocks, business centers, 24-story building emerge from where we stand today. The future has started. Lagos is welcome to you. To stem rural urban migration, the Lagos State Government has put in place different projects in the rural areas of Lagos to make life livable in rural areas. Such projects include rural electrification, rural water, rural jetty and town hall.